Language models like BERT and GPT reached very important milestones in the last years. These models are able to learn language representation with high contextual and relational knowledge and can be effectively used in many downstream tasks such as question answering and dialogue systems. So why not leveraging these representation learning models also in vision? Or even better, can we learn joint representation between language and vision? This is the question to which the paper titled Video Bert, a joint model for video and language representation learning answer. The proposed solution is to leverage the power of BERT over sentences composed of both linguistic and visual tokens. What Video BERT is able to do is quite remarkable. For example, from a few sentences that explain a recipe, it is able to produce short output videos with the same semantic meaning. Note here the close meaning between the sentence and the predicted video token. Also, from a single video token, VideoBert is able to forecast the next high-level phases of the recipe. This is another example. You can see also here the very tight meaning between each sentence and the video representation. Learning joint models over language and vision is a key factor in the progression of the current state of the algorithms. Language alone is a starting point, but once you can ground it into vision, the possibilities for application are much wider and useful. In fact, as humans, our main method of expression is language. In few words and sentences, we can condense an incredible amount of information. And most of the time, they have an actionable result that can be captioned by our vision system. So learning this correspondence via high-level representation is important. The algorithm introduced in the paper called VideoBert learns this representation from a source of data that is extremely widespread, videos. VideoBert, as many other language models, is a self-supervised algorithm, meaning that it doesn't require additional labels. All the data it needs is already in the videos. VideoBert is a natural extension of BERT to video. For those of you who don't know the inner workings of BERT, let me explain it in a few words. BERT is a language representation model based on the transformer architecture. The particularity of BERT compared with other language models is that it is based on a masked language model. What does it mean is that a percentage of the input tokens are masked at random and the task is to predict correctly those masked tokens. For doing that, they use a bidirectional model that is trained left to right and right to left in order to predict those masked words based on the full context of the sentence. The model is permutation variant, so the position relative to the sentence of each token is added to its embedding. If the input has multiple sentences, these are separated by a SEP token. The batch model will learn an embedding for each of the word tokens, the tag of the position and the parameters of the transformer. The first difference between BERT and VideoBERT is in the input source. Indeed, VideoBERT uses videos as the source of the data. Thus, the first phase is to convert the videos to a format compatible with BERT. See, BERT takes as input and output a sequence of tokens that belong to a given dictionary. For example, in language, the tokens are the words that belong to the English dictionary. So for the text part, they simply convert the audio of the videos to text using an automatic speech recognition system with few other minor modifications. For the video part, the things get a little more complicated. See, videos are formed by a lot of consecutive frames but we need to discretize them into visual words or tokens and choose the ones with a higher meaning to build a 
shared vocabulary, similar to language. To do that, they use a vector quantization method applied to spatial temporal features that are extracted from a 3D ConvNet. Let's see how it works. From each video, they extract from non overlapping windows clips of 30 frames. Each video is passed to a pre trained 3D ConvNet called S3D, from which is extracted a 1000 dimensional feature vector. After this stage, they will have a large number of vectors from each clip of each video. So to reduce their number and get only the most representative feature vectors, they use a clustering algorithm that will create 20,736 clusters in total. Then from each cluster, the central feature vector will represent the whole cluster. Thus, ultimately, they will have a dictionary of 20,736 visual tokens. This process is called vector quantization. You can see the result of some examples in these images. On the left are shown the original frame, while on the right are shown the visual centroid that will make the vocabulary. You can see that though the lower level features are different, the high level semantic meaning is preserved. Great. Now that we have the visual and linguistic tokens, we can see the adjustment that the authors of VideoBert have done compared to Bert. By the way, if you are enjoying the content and learned something new, remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks. They combine the linguistic sentence with the visual sentence by concatenating them. VO1 and VOH are visual tokens and the greater symbol is a token that declares the beginning of the video sentence. And mask is the max video or language token to predict. BERT has also an additional task for predicting if a video sentence followed the previous one. However, here is not trivial. And in video BERT is proposed a task to replace it called linguistic visual alignment that predict whether the linguistic sentence is temporarily aligned with the visual one. VideoBart is trained from text only, video only and video text to force the model to learn both language modeling for text, for video and the correspondence between the two domains. Once the model is trained, it can be used for multiple downstream tasks. These tasks can be done with a zero-shot learning or after a fine-tuning. In the paper, they first pre-trained the model on cooking videos from YouTube and then evaluated VideoBert on the YouCook2 dataset. They first evaluated VideoBert on a zero-shot action and object classification task where VideoBert showed comparable results to a supervised as a 3D method on the top 5% verbs and objects. Note the video part obtained lower results on the top 1%, but this is due to the fact that it has an open vocabulary, whereas S3D has a closed one. They also evaluated video parts on a video captioning task for testing its transfer capabilities. For this task, they use VideoBart as a feature structure and train the transformer as outlined in the paper of Zhu et al. They experimented also with a model called VideoBart plus S3D, where they concatenated the features from VideoBart and S3D. From the table, it is clear that the features started with VideoBart have a positive impact outperforming the other models and baselines. This example provide a more qualitative result. Though the predicted captions from VideoBert are exactly the same as the ground truth, their semantic meaning remains very close. That's all. If you enjoyed the content and learned something new, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks and see ya.